Hey, welcome everybody. Mark. Don't support the carbon tax. So you they think don't. that all of their support, their declining support for Ukraine is linked solely to the carbon tax, tax in this free trade deal? The, the carbon tax was inserted by Justin Trudeau, not by my supporters. Why did he do that? No, but I'm just curious. Can you explain to me why there is a carbon tax in the agreement? No, but the question is why. No, no, I asked you, you a question. You, you keep you keep asking with the agreement. We're the journalists. Why, 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 why do you ask the question? Yeah, I, I have the freedom to ask questions if I want to, and I've just answered. I've been answering your questions all, right, all week. All right, here's another one. So, no, no. The government's introducing why would the investment tax, tax, tax credit. We're, no, we're, you're not changing the subject. I know you want to change the subject. No, I want to ask because you don't want to talk about Trudeau's carbon tax. You I want to ask a question because no. in a democracy we Sorry. ask the question and you answer. I, and I'll, I decide the answer I give. And the yes, answer and the answer is this: we will axe the tax. And Trudeau can try to divide Canadians by putting a carbon tax in a free trade ag agreement that we already had for years. It won't change a thing. It's misleading. Because I will axe the tax, and I will axe the tax with delight and with passion and with incredible speed. So when I'm Prime Minister, you will be shocked at the speed with which I will ask the tax. And the Canadian people will be able to look up at the gas stations and see the prices coming down. And Trudeau can try to distract from his hated carbon tax by putting it in a free trade amendment to a pre-existing agreement. It won't stop me because I will ax the tax, I will ax the tax, and I will ax the tax. Thank you. But not an industrial emission. I will, I will ax the tax, I will ax the tax with the speed that you will be completely surprised by. You will be, you'll be blown away by the speed that I ax the carbon tax. <laughs> uh, hilarious. One, what Canadians need now is a common sense plan that axes the tax, builds the homes, fixes the budget, and stops the crime. Axing the tax, building the homes, fixing the budget, and stopping the crime is just common sense and it's exactly what we need to re repair the damage after eight years of Justin Trudeau who has doubled housing costs by funding bureaucracies that block building and printing 600 billion dollars of inflationary money. He's given Canada the most expensive housing by far in the G7. Housing costs have increased 40 percent faster than incomes, the worst gap of any G7 country the second worst in, of all 40 OECD countries, twice as bad as the OECD average. Our housing is now 25 to 45 percent more expensive than the states, even though their economy is 10 times bigger, their population is 10 times as large, and they have less land to build on. He's made it so that Vancouver has the third worst housing market, housing prices in the world. We now have 30 homeless encampments in Halifax that we never had before Justin Trudeau. Marcel here, Ernie Racy, another day of news. February 7th, Pierre Polyev lays out exactly what Trudeau has done to Canada. All boom, 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 boom. These are all the problems. Look what you've done. Here we go. Our young people have to wait till they're 40, even though when I was housing minister, the average age to get a home was 29. Uh, that was only eight years ago. Incredible how affordable housing was when I was minister. It was $750 to rent an apartment in Montreal when I was minister. Now it's over 2,000, a triple in one city. Uh, after eight years of Trudeau, two million people line up at food banks. If you look at these images, just put them in black and white. What do you see? You see the Great Depression. And all the wonky economists are debating whether we're in a recession. For those people in those lineups, we are not in a recession. We are in a depression, a Justin Trudeau depression. Um, the country's falling apart. The country is falling apart. Yesterday, there were nearly a dozen drug overdoses within an hour in Belleville. This is after eight years of Trudeau effectively decriminalizing hard drugs and funding opioids and unleashing chaos by releasing re repeat violent offenders into our streets. And in order to distract, he spreads fear and falsehood. He attacks hunters, small business owners, Muslim parents. He divides Jews against Muslims, Hindus against Sikhs. He divides East against West. He divides East against West. He divides business owners against workers. He, he, he is tearing the country apart to distract from his appalling record of rising costs and rising crime. And we expect to see more of it. And just one quick story. Here we have in, the, in CTV, a new story about a Gatineau man who had his Dodge Ram stolen, put a, an Apple AirTag in it. God, 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 thank God he did that. And so he found out that it was at the Port of Montreal, ping that it was over at the port where I was yesterday talking about car theft. 
So he called the cops and said, good news, I know where my car is. They said, well, we can't help, you have to call CBSA. He called CBSA, they said, we can't help, you'll have to call the cops. CBSA says, we don't know what box it's in, so we can't get you your Dodge Ram back. And it just so happens I have a solution for that, which is that we should have scanners that allow us to look into the boxes to figure out what's there. Now, Trudeau spent the money on consultants. I'm going to spend it on scanners and 75 border officers so that we can open the right box and Mr. Roos can get back his 2021 Dodge Ram. That's a common sense solution. So that's what we need, common sense, to repair the damage that Trudeau has caused after eight years. He's not worth the cost. He's not worth the crime. But when I'm Prime Minister, we're going to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. Do you support age restrictions for puberty blockers and hormone therapies for trans kids? Um, I think that uh, Justin Trudeau is trying to divide and distract Canadians by spreading disinformation about uh, the decisions that premiers and parents are making. I want to know you, I want what to do you think? What do you think? I want to know your position. What do you think? It's your own party policy. It's your own party policy. At party convention. I think we should protect the rights of parents to make their own decisions. What does it mean? With regards to their children. And I believe that adults should have the freedom to make any decision they want about their bodies. But mine is I think they're, I think Medical interventions for minors, as your own party members suggested. Medical sir. interventions, like what? That, that, it, that is the language that your party. What medical used. interventions? Well, such you would have to ask puberty. your party members. What medical such interventions? Such as medical, such as puberty blockers and hormone. For minors? Yeah. Yes. Irreversible. You're talking about. I want to understand your position. No, I don't want to be clear. I want to be clear. Puberty blockers for minors. Puberty blockers for minors. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that? I think that we should protect children and their ability to make adult decisions when they are adults. So you think only adults, only adults should make? Oh, you said yes. Just, just to be clear, you said yes. Only adults should take puberty blockers. I think we should protect children, let them make adult decisions when they become adults. So that's you support age restrictions. You are against puberty blockers for kids under the age of 18. Is that, is that yes. clear? Yes. Okay. okay. What about, can I ask you about, um, uh, in Alberta? By the way, I just want to make another comment on this. Justin Trudeau is again puffing out his chest, trying to divide Canadians and attack parents who are trying to protect their kids. He will, in the end, back down on this, just like he had to back down on his firearms policy, just like he had to back down on bringing in medical assistance and dying for people suffering from mental illness. Just like he's backing down again and again and again, he will back down on this because he is not interested in protecting kids. He's interested in using this as a divisive wedge to distract from doubling housing costs and quadrupling carbon taxes on our people. But for you, for you, you're, 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 so you're against puberty blockers for kids under yes. the age of 18. Mr. Hey, Mr. What about opting yes, in? What about parents in Alberta having to opt in for sex ed? Where do you every stand? Every no, that's, that's, that's a decision for the province. No, but what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? a question on Ukraine, please. There is a measured decline in support for the war in Ukraine, especially among your voters. What is your message to them, specifically them, to convince them that Canada must remain on side? My message is that we have to defend against countries that are mercilessly invaded by aggressive powers uh, so that we dissuade dictators from this kind of aggression. And, uh, you know, I would say that uh, Justin Trudeau has done absolutely nothing on this file except divide Canadians. He deliberately divides on the subject by inserting a carbon tax in a trade amendment that has no place there. And, uh, Canadians are against the carbon tax. I'm against the carbon tax. He, Trudeau never should have tried to divide Canadians on Ukraine by the forcing the carbon tax into that agreement. Ukraine free trade. The new one. The new version. There is no new one. What there is is a. It was just passed. No, no. What there, if I could, what there is is a carbon tax amendment. You know what happened if this deal didn't pass? Nothing. Because we already have a free trade agreement. What we have now is a carbon tax amendment to a pre-existing deal. 
So what would you do I mean, if you become prime minister? We're not going to honor, honor a carbon tax amendment. But your supporters okay. already we're, we're don't like to, the carbon we're going to, Why don't they support Ukraine? They don't. Because they. Oh, it's the morning in the desert. Look at that. I got my latte ready to go. One window, more window, and more desert on this side. Yeah. Good morning, everybody.